So another scenario I often find myself in is one where they just come to you with a brand. Like you may be working at a product company and they only have the brand and they have no typefaces necessarily chosen or there's really no knowledge around typefaces and what typefaces to use. You may be working at a consultancy and a client comes in and has a brand and that's all they have. So in this scenario, what I would do is I would really think about what the brand is like. What are the goals of the product? What are you trying to build? What platform are you on? Everything. So in our case, we have a client right here, Habitual. And you know, it's a nice little logo. I like it. It's, it's really fun. It's, uh, it's really modern. Let's zoom in here. I like the little smile over here on the, the bag. This typeface is uh, Gilroy. Really nice typeface, really geometric, but it's more, I guess, used for display. And it isn't necessarily the best typeface for all types of like applications, whether that's like using it for body copy, using it for buttons. And so I'm trying to look for a typeface that's going to help us build our application. One thing I'm going to think about though is the client and the product that we're trying to build. So I need to build a product that users are going to trust. So, I mean, I'm going to avoid display typefaces that may be too funky or uh, handwriting uh, based typefaces or script typefaces. I think I'm going to stick with something a little bit more modern, probably a sans serif. Um, I want the content to be really clear. I think like when we're working with users buying products or searching for products, they need to be able to read really quickly. Buttons need to be really readable and legible. Content prices, like all that kind of stuff, we need to really take into account on um, what type of typeface is going to be really great for that. That's definitely going to be in the back of my head. Um, one other thing is I'm working on mobile, so I don't think we necessarily need more than one typeface in this instance, especially for the type of product that we're building. So I'm probably going to stick to one and that's totally fine. And my goal here is to pick a typeface that is really versatile. So has enough visual contrast, has enough uh, font styles. So let's jump right into Google Fonts and I'll show you how it works. So, hey, welcome. We're in Google Fonts right now. And this is a great site for getting free fonts. I mean, a variety of really high quality fonts too. So this is what I use all the time. If I don't have a like a paid font or I don't have a font within Figma, Figma actually comes, there's an option for you to actually have all the Google Fonts preloaded in there. So that's great. The only thing is, this is probably a better way to test what fonts you may like and font styles. So what I usually do here is I come to this page, I may type something like, um, let's think of like a headline that our client may have, like find the stuff that you love. So I can already see like something like this is definitely not going to work but I'm not going to go through 993 families, which is, uh, it's, it's a lot. I can uh, bump up the pixels in terms of the typefaces over here that are being displayed. I like to go into the categories and if for this instance, like I said before, I'm going to go with a sans serif. Let's just select that. So now we're down to 300 families. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my font properties. I want enough styles. I don't want to have just one just because it's going to really limit us in terms of creating enough contrast on screen. So I think six plus is fine. That may be even pushing it, but we'll figure this out. The great thing about Google Fonts is, so let's take Roboto. Roboto is like one of the most popular fonts. You'll see this on Android a bunch. So you'll see all the different font styles that they have. You'll be able to bring up the size and you can even select a style. So if you want to stick to an individual style, this is great. You can also look over here and you can download them from here. You can also embed them. So if you're coding or you need to get it for your developer, like this is a great way to do that. You can even get the at import code. So really great resource in order for getting all that kind of content. What I'd like to do is I don't like to get all the different styles individually, I'll just download the font in one shot. And that just makes it so much easier. If I download that, I'll see Roboto and I'll be in my downloads folder and I'll just kind of unzip that. I already have the font, so I don't need to do this, but I'll just unzip that and uh, click on those uh, fonts to add them. 
and then restart Figma and it'll be right there. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of different types of uh, typefaces over here and choose like about, I think to choose around like five, just to give me enough variety. I'm definitely going to, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to choose Open Sans. I like Lato, Lato, whatever you want to call it. This is a great one. I mean, really legible. And I like the different types of variation in, uh, in each letter form. So let's just bring this up. Like I like just like kind of like the soft edges here. I think it kind of contrasts our brand just a little bit, but you know, it's also a really clear typeface. So that's an option. So I'm gonna choose Leto, so I'll just download it. So I already have it, but I'll download that. What else is there? Let's take a look. See Montserrat's a little too wide and I don't like that for like when you're trying to do copy because it just stretches everything out. Source Sense Pro is another great one, but I think it's a little too condensed. You'll notice that it looks a little squished. What else do we have here? Poppins is a really nice one for like just being geometric, but the problem I find with this is that, let's zoom in. You know, all these thick and thins make things a little harder to read. It's a cool font, I like it, I've used it in the past. What else do we have here? Hmm. We have a lot of different types. Ooh, I like, I like cabin a lot. I think we can use cabin. I'm gonna pick this one and I think there's enough variety here. We may run into issues of contrast uh, between different types of elements like headlines and body copy or buttons. I actually like cabin a lot, so I'm just gonna pick that one up. So I'm gonna download the family just to show you that it's being downloaded and what I have thus far. What else do we have here? So overpass is really interesting. I remember our logo had a little kind of like slant. So, and I thought that was really interesting and maybe this can match it. Maybe it can be like a closer variation. So we'll pick that one up too. I like Meriwether, but I think this is uh, too close to like a sans serif with all the different types of uh, intricacies over here and the U, the Y. What else can we choose? Inter is a nice one. Yeah, let's take a look. And it has a lot of styles. I think this is, this is good. I think Inter is a very safe typeface. Kind of have like uh, the vibes of like, kind of like uh, Helvetica a bit, just in terms of like uh, some of the letter forms. So I think this is kind of safe, but we'll bring it on board and we'll take a look after. What else? I think we should probably grab like one more. I wanna go for something a little bit more geometric because I like how geometric the uh, word mark is for our uh, typeface in terms of like uh, the habitual branding. I like how uh, it's really round. Ooh, oh, there we go. So this kind of looks like Futura. Jost is a really nice one too. I think we're gonna run into some issues of legibility just because if you look at the X height here, it's really small and that's usually one of the problems of these geometric types of uh, fonts. But I think it's something to try out. That V is really harsh too, but let's down. So what I'll do now is like I have a bunch of different typefaces down here. I will extract them from the zip folder and I will bring them into Figma and jump right into Figma and start playing around with them. Now, you don't have to limit yourself to five, you can do a bunch. I mean, you don't wanna go overboard, but make it manageable and try to think about the different types of typefaces that are going to really work with your brand and that tone and the types of typefaces that are actually going to work for the product you're trying to build. So. I'm thinking a lot about clarity. I'm thinking a lot about making sure that there is a hierarchy between different things. Because if I think about the different types of content that I'm going to have to produce, there's uh, titles for products, there's prices, there may be like little pills like or chips that say like sale. There may be like some description copy. So I mean, already in that little like component, there are so many different type elements and I need to make sure that there's enough contrast there. So. I'm gonna jump into Figma and start playing around with these typefaces.